So now we're going to look at the 555 timer in monostable mode. What that means is the output's going to stay low. In this case, I'm going to use a blue LED. Blue LED will stay lit up until we close the switch right there. Closing the switch and um, whether or not you release it starts a timing process. You need to release it though to finish the timing process. But uh, in any case, um, the uh, capacitor will start charging at that time. The output will be high. I'm going to use a red LED to light up in that case. And uh, the amount of time the output's going to be high is for however long it takes the capacitor to go from uh, zero volts to two thirds of the supply voltage. So that's one of the uh, reference voltages in the 555 timer. Uh, one third and two third. We're only using the two third in this video, and uh, you don't even have to use those if you don't want. So there you can see NE555 right there. Look for the uh, part number. I got this um, 555 from uh, this kit right there. It shares a spot with the LM358 right there, which I also use uh, quite a bit. And there's other integrated circuits. I made videos of uh, some of them. Um, but uh, in any case, we're gonna get back to this. I recommend if you have an integrated circuit you want, get it in a kit with a bunch of other integrated circuits that you can learn about. So the divot goes on top, and then starting on the left, we got pin one, down to pin four, jump across five, six, seven, eight. This is called a dual inline package. They straddle this uh, gap in between the uh, two connections to the left and to the right. So now let's talk about the jumpers I already have on the board. I think this is a good way uh, to go. Start with the uh, jumpers, uh, even when you're building the circuit. So we have uh, eight right there. That's the positive supply. Usually it would probably be VCC on a sheet or something, may say V plus, but in any case, that's pin eight. Now we have a uh, pin number one. That's to the negative supply right there, which uh, that's a ground symbol. Same thing as a negative supply if you just have a positive supply in relationship to that, uh, zero volts and so on right there. It's the negative supply. And there you can see uh, when I apply power, um, if I clip the negative supply to uh, these header pins there, that jumper brings the power over there because the board doesn't do that automatically. That's what these two jumper wires are for. So they're jumper wires. now. We got uh, pin number four, that's the reset pin. If you connect that to ground, you gotta get a you know fairly good connection to ground right there. Then it will uh, set the output low, the output will connect to ground, and that's all that it will do. Um, and then also, the uh, capacitor will not uh, charge. It'll stay uh, discharged at the same time. But uh, in any case, we disabled it, put it on the positive supply. We don't have to worry about that. So uh, that's the jumpers there. Then we got uh, this one right there. We're tying pin seven and pin six together. So that's a direct connection. What that means is that uh, when the output goes low, pin seven also connects to ground. So normally it's off. It's just a dead end uh, right there. And then uh, when the output is low, then it uh, connects to ground right there. I shouldn't say normally it's off. That's one of the states. It's either off, not conducting, or it's uh, headed directly to ground. You can see the capacitor will instantly discharge. So you don't want to use too big of a value of capacitor right there, because it is a short circuit. Um, but I think 100 microfarad will be just fine. So um, yeah, that's about it for what's already on there. This uh, you know kind of looks flexible, like the uh, jumper wires there, but it's actually just a solid piece of metal, basically like these, although I got it uh, from a different source. And uh, so the more you bend this, the weaker it's going to get. Um, compared to these so uh, just be aware of that now we will uh, go with the output right there so I have the LEDs directly to the output but I'm gonna swap their position with the resistors doesn't really matter blue LED I like to light up when the output is low connected to ground so longer lead the anode I'm gonna put to the positive supply shorter lead the cathode I'm gonna put up one spot right there and again, we don't have power on here, so there's not gonna be any lighting up or anything. And uh, looking at the color code, which, uh, I mean, I didn't really have to read the color code. The colors are uh, different enough for these three where it's uh, pretty easy to get them pretty quickly. But yeah, there you can see, we got the one, zero, zero, so that's 100, but then we got one right there, that brown. That's a multiplier, um, one more zero, I should say. It's not one, or times 10, however you wanna look at it. So one, zero, zero, one more zero, 1,000. And it could be 1% higher or lower. That's uh, what that band is saying, because these aren't uh, perfect. And they're cheap resistors, so it may be even worse than 1% off, um, but not much worse. And uh, also, maybe uh, it's not as accurate because I abused them or something. 
you never know. Now, we're going to come to the uh, red LED. I like to use that to light up when the output is high. So you can see that current path right there. There are some transistors, though, along the way that make you lose some of the voltage. So um, probably instead of 5 volts, we'll lose about a volt and a half. So probably about 3.5 volts. But in case, 220 ohm resistor will work out well either way. And I'm going to put the cathode, the short lead, to the uh, negative supply right there. And i got to make sure you put the LED in the right way. That's the main thing. Um, if uh, one or both of these aren't lit up when they should be, a uh, good chance they were put in uh, backwards. So we will uh, do a quick look at the color code. Again, I'm using values that I use a lot, so I can just take a quick look at it and know its value without actually reading the color code. But there you can see red, red. So 2-2, two, two, that's really common um, to have numbers, uh, resistor uh, values, I should say, that start with 2-2. Two, two. And then black for 0. Now that black means uh, times 1, or no more zeros. That's what I like to think of. No more zeros at all. 220, no more zeros, 220. 1% tolerance, of course. And uh, so you put the tolerance band to the uh, right. Uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, again, that's a common value to use if you're using 5 volt circuits, especially if you're making LED circuits um, with the red LEDs. And um, so, you know, you'll get used to that pretty quick if you make these circuit quite a bit. So we got our output wired up, pin number three right there. Above it is the uh, trigger pin right there. And then over here is the timing part of the circuit. So it'll probably be a little easier to see what's going on if we do the uh, trigger pin. So you can see we got a switch right there. So trigger pin, pin number two, is waiting for a low input. It's called active low. Sometimes you'll see a little bubble like next to the two or something to indicate it's waiting for a low input. Um, but uh, that's not critical to know. That's just kind of something you may see here and there. So we need a low input to trigger it, but stray signals in the air. So I'm gonna use uh, this jumper, and uh, normally I uh, connect uh, pin uh, two and six together with this uh, jumper. I gotta go up this spot, hopefully you uh, could see that, and uh, I wasn't looking through the camera. I'm gonna have to squeeze these a little bit closer right there. So I might not use this one to connect two and six together anymore, but in case, um, normally I would just use a jumper but uh, that uh, fits but I just figured since I already had this on the board from the last video I would use this again so yeah that's all I gotta do to adjust it you can make fine adjustments but nowhere near the adjustments with that one it'll get weaker over time and I already got uh, that jumper so there needs to be a space between them I like to put the switch where we got the supply rail uh, gap right there it's a gap between the holes and uh, so they're still, all these red dots are connected to each other, but they left a little space right there. It helps uh, helps you guide. You got five, 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 but all of these are connected all the way down. This is just five connections, each one of these rows right there, no matter uh, what else is going on. So yeah, put that in. And uh, this board seems to hold the switch uh, pretty good right there. Um, some of these uh, boards, the higher quality boards, tend to have tighter connections and uh, these switches can pop out. Um, but these uh, cheaper boards, they tend to kind of bend to the metal. So that gives us our low input, direct connection to ground to pin number two. We want the pull-up resistor because, uh, like if I touch this uh, jumper, maybe even just in the air, there's enough uh, stray electromagnetic fields and stuff that can apply a voltage. So we want to make it so it doesn't. So we can either go up to a pin two or just down to the switch, doesn't matter. It's all uh, the same connection right there, whatever this jumper is uh, plugged into. So if you need more than like four holes, you can always just use a jumper to connect it to another row right there. Then you got eight holes that are all one connection. Hopefully that makes sense. So we got that there. It's a pull up resistor. It's gonna keep, uh, we're gonna use five volts for the circuit, as you can see there. It's gonna keep five volts at the trigger pin, pin two unless we press the switch right there. It'll give zero volts. So that's why it needs to be a pull-up resistor because we make a direct connection to ground. If it was a direct connection to the positive supply, that would be a short circuit right there. So I have a power supply that limits current, so that won't damage anything. Um, but if you don't limit current, you would uh, damage stuff. And it's still not a good idea to do that. So let's go with the uh, timing resistor right there. So these values are adjustable. Again, I wouldn't go too high in the value with the uh, capacitor, maybe a thousand microfarads, okay. Um, but I tend to go down, so 10 microfarad, 
when we have a direct uh, discharge right there uh, to ground. So that's only while well, it's discharging. Well, it's charging, it'll charge through the 10K resistor. And any uh, current going through the 10K resistor just goes right to ground when it is uh, discharging as well. So it doesn't affect the discharge timing of the capacitor at all. They both uh, discharge separately, or they both go to ground separately, I should say, when the output is low, uh, which means pin seven is also connected to ground low. So yeah, we got the uh, 100 microfarad capacitor there and uh, the resistor. I was gonna do the resistor first, but uh, in any case, I had to put these kind of closer together with the uh, A-stable mode, and because um, it was uh, bridging seven and six. So I'm gonna spread them apart a little bit. And these wires are a little thin on these capacitors, or on these resistors. I'm gonna put it the other way so it uh, matches the color code better. Doesn't matter which direction you put resistors in, but um, generally, it's good to make it so somebody looking at it will be able to read the color code without having to read it backwards. So um, put the tolerance to the right, and usually I put tolerance towards uh, the bottom, like uh, with this one right there, when I go uh, vertical. So I'm pretty sure we wire it up everything right, right there. So we're gonna get the power supply. So now below here, we got the uh, power supply. We got the uh, banana plugs right there, plugged into the uh, power supply. I said banana clips when uh, I was making the ACE stable. Um, again, uh, whenever you're watching videos where people are just kind of quickly putting stuff together, uh, remember, they may kind of say things uh, wrong, so just be aware that make might make small mistakes that aren't worth uh, reshooting the whole scene or making big edits or something. Um, be aware of that. So now, power is off. That's the best way to do this, uh, especially if you're building the circuit. Well, the alligator clips are clipped to the uh, rails right there. Definitely want power off, but it's still good to add it now. And then I have a maximum of 20 milliamps of current because we won't need that much in this circuit anyways. And uh, so... Uh, as long as uh, we stay under 20 milliamps of current, I don't think I can damage a single part of this right there. If I do accidentally do a short circuit, as I mentioned before, like if I wire this directly to positive supply, this power supply turns off. So even though it has current limited, only 20 milliamps of current will flow. Um, you know, there's kind of like a short spike. Um, but in case, it will turn off like you see there. So we'll turn the power on. I'm going to set it on the, uh, on the board. Uh, but there you can see we got about 4 milliamps of current. Blue LED is lit up, I'm gonna dim the lamp right there. So it's a little easier to see. And uh, blue LED lit up. So this is the stable state. That's why it's monostable. There's one stable state that's low. The unstable part is when you press the button right there, and we're gonna look at the current. You're gonna see it go up. And it should only be about a second. So um, that may not have been long enough to get an accurate uh, measurement right there, but again, we have uh, five volts at the supply, but probably only about 3.3 .3 volts at the output right there. Red LED is dropping a couple of volts. So probably about a volt and a half divided by 220 ohms of resistance. So yeah, I think that's probably a pretty accurate. Um, but in any case, about seven milliamps of current. Red LED is okay, you know. Um, yeah, it's really easy to tell it's on in person. And yeah, you can definitely see the color change on camera right there. So in any case, uh, yeah. That's uh, really about it. Again, I went slow. This uh, video was meant more for like absolute beginners, whereas most of my circuits were, I, you know, discussed the circuit. I kind of expect, you know, uh, you know how to build them and everything, and it's more of a review or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I look at a lot of schematics, and uh, uh, I enjoy that, you know, and so that's where I want you to get as well. And so I just kind of quickly build it on the board for people that are looking at like schematics when I see something I think is cool. And, uh, you know, I make my own version of it, but I try to share it. So again, went slow for absolute beginners and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.